well, big welcome back to our online tutorials here at Case Flower School. So again, we're sticking to pumpkin arrangements. It's October and I have my skeleton t-shirt on today. So how are we going to decorate this pumpkin? So as you can see, I have sprayed it with kind of a metallic spray. It's kind of like a bluey teal color. It's by Floralife. So again, you'll get this in a florist wholesaler. But as I said before in our other tutorials, don't be put off by the sprays in the likes of Aldi and Lidl. They're absolutely great value. They're half the price and they're excellent quality. And if anything, I find that they're even better for gripping the pumpkin skin, you know that way, and not getting scratched. So what we've done is we've scooped out the inside, well, most of it, of the inside of the pumpkin. And the circle that I have there, we've kind of measured it. I don't want to wedge the stem yet until I have the floral foam in, but I've measured to fit one of what we call the large posy dishes or people call them square end posy dishes, where it's kind of like a square end and a roundish curve shaped posy dish. So these posy dishes are great for fitting down into uh, pumpkins, but again, in some of the designs you'll see where I actually use the bulb bowl. Now to preserve the pumpkin, what I normally do is I get a bowl of bleaching water, and I did all mine at the same time. I get a sponge, and I sponge the inside of it. Last year I used a water mister and I sprayed them. Now it did the job, but I felt I, I nearly had a pain in my finger pulling the mister, kind of like spraying them, where I found the sponge, you know, just a normal kitchen sponge. Mine actually even had the pot scrubber on one side of it, you know the way. So I held it by the pot scrubber, dipped it in the bleaching water and literally blobbed it, you know what I mean, all around the inside. And I also did the lid, the lid as well, you know the way. So kind of like all the fleshy part and it definitely helps to deteriorate or sl slow down the deterioration of the pumpkin. But again, just to put your customer's mind at peace, you know that way, they are fresh flowers we're putting into this. So like the fresh flowers, they are going to die or this is going to go off, you know? So possibly you could say to your customer, it'll last the same length as the flowers. Now today I'm using carnations, which are great lasting flowers. So you'll definitely get 10 days plus and you'll definitely get 10 days. I've gotten two weeks out of the pumpkin, so there'll be no fear there. So we we'll start off getting ourselves organized where you need a third of a block of floral foam. So if you get a block of floral foam, cut it in three, it'll sit down perfect, you see, into these posy dish containers. And what I always like to do then is trim around the corners, you know, the way I trim around the edges. Now it's not necessary to do that. It's a habit we have here at Case Flare School. All my students have that habit. It's something we do all the time. What I'm then going to do is strap it in with the anchor tape. Now don't skimp on, I'm just getting the beginning of it here. Don't skimp on the amount of anchor tape that you use. So I might like to use a nice big long piece where I see some of you can use two or three small ones. Grip it onto the dish, okay, hold it. Pull your tape tight and come around and overlap on top of itself. Do you see like that? That's a really secure way of strapping something in. But obviously you can only do that if the dish is going to be camouflaged, which it will in today's case, because it's going right down into the pumpkin. So I'm not going to strap it into the pumpkin, because you'll see here, it's a tight squeeze. There we go, press it right down. And you know what I find as well? Like it's not a complete seal, but you'd be amazed how much that will seal, you know what I mean, the pumpkin. And again, it slows down the deterioration of it. So greenery wise, I'm just using bits of foliage out of the garden, stuff that you can sort really, really easy. So I have little bits of eucalyptus, but you know what, I cheat it. This is a bit of artificial eucalyptus, okay? And I've sprayed it with the teal kind of spray as well, the metallic spray, just to use it as kind of like something different going through the arrangement. Again, you don't have to do this. So I'm just going to cut that in pieces there just into smaller ones. So the way I made two out of that, I made two out of that one there, and I made two out of that one there. Now again, so I got six pieces out of that one stem. That stem of eucalyptus was from evergreen silk plants and it was a more of a eucalyptus colour when I bought it. So again, you could buy them and leave them their normal colour. Do you know the way? You don't have to spray it. But I was just here and I said, you know what? We'll spray it and we'll see what happens. Flower-wise, I'm sticking to our pay pinks here today with a bit of lilac. So I have these beautiful hypericum berries, so I'm going to use some of them. I have a couple of germany. To keep the price kind of reasonable, I'm going to use some baby carnations. So they kind of have more of a, a mauve shade to them rather than kind of pale pink. And I also have some of the Veronica. So when you're picking out your flowers to go into a flower arrangement, make sure that you have lots of shapes and lots of textures. 
where the Germany are what I would call a very flat looking flare. And you can see the way then the Veronica completely complements it, you know, like with the points. And then you have your baby carnations, which are more of a roundy ball sort of shape. So straight away, I have three completely different shapes. And then for a bit of texture, we have little balls, mini balls, you know, that way where our high pair can vary. So it's the same. Now, obviously, if you're on a budget and all you can get is a bunch of carnations, of course, you can do it in just carnations. But just I want to try and give you a little bit of flare arranging technique at the same time. It's the same when I'm doing the foliage. Rather than keeping to all the one type, if you could mix it as you go along, it does look much nicer. So I'm going to start off with little bits of bottle brush. So when I'm cutting it off the tree, I cut it to the size that I need. Like there's no point in you cutting a massive big branch and half of it going in the bin. So just literally take off your tree or off your bushes, you know that way, the length that you need. So I'm just going to go around the edge of the floral foam, slightly sticking it upwards into the floral foam with little bits of the bottle brush. Now I am purposely leaving little spaces in between it and that's so that I can go back afterwards and I can add another variety, you know, in between it. Now as you can see, when I was foraging the foliage, some of it I robbed long and other pieces I robbed that little bit shorter and it makes absolutely no difference. As I work around the arrangement, I'm not kind of worried that one piece is a bit longer or another piece is a little bit shorter than the other. Just to kind of turn that around there and let you see it. So I've used possibly around 10 pieces around the outside there to start off with. Now I did the same with the Silver Sussex. Again, when I was foraging it, I kind of like just took it or cut it to the size that I needed. So what I'm going to do now is go around the outside in between most of the bottle brushes, probably definitely every second one and maybe every odd one, you know, that way, adding in these little pieces. And straight away, you can see what I mean by texture. It looks so much nicer than if you kept it all the one type. But I do understand some of you don't have the choice or the selection. In saying that, if you have a bit of space in your own garden, write down and go to a garden centre, buy yourself a silver Sussex and buy yourself a bottle brush and also buy yourself a eucalyptus tree. And you know, get yourself a pittosporum tree while you're at it as well. I could go on and on and on, but these are all great foliages that we use throughout the year. Do you know what? If you have room, grow yourself a spruce and a holly tree and you'll have that for Christmas as well. So there I've just went around the outside, but still plenty of space because remember I have a lot of flowers, so don't overdo the flowers. Now I do plan on adding the lid, you see, back on later on. So I'm now going to camouflage the top of it. Now normally when you're doing an arrangement, well normally here, we would stand a piece up in the centre. Do you know the way we'd call it number one? But today I don't want to do that because that's going to get flattened when I put the lid on. So I'm going to pretend that there's a number one in there and I'm now just going to insert foliage, you see, on a slant, kind of around, if you want to call it, the imaginary number one. And if you look there, you can see them pieces are all different lengths. So I put in three or four and now I'm going to step down and I'm just going to add in three, four, five or six, like no particular number. Like this is just showing you how simple this arrangement can be. I'm now going back to my Silver Sussex. So up around the top again, I'm going to add in pieces of the Silver Sussex all going in on a slant, you know, randomly in between the bottle brush. Sometimes I've added two pieces, sometimes I've skipped a piece, and now I'm stepping down. And again, I'm turning it around on the turntable that I'm looking at it from different angles, and I'm just kind of adding in these little pieces of Silver Sussex here and there. Now, when you're watching this, you might say to yourself, God, she flew through that, like that happened very quick. But remember, I had all the pieces cut, so that saves a lot of time. And I also had all the ends cut off it. The turntable that I'm using, you'll buy that in Ikea. They're only $9.99, well, they were when I bought it. And they'll deliver out, you'd obviously pay for your postage. This is fresh eucalyptus, but it's very close to the artificial one that I have as well. But I'm going to add that in a second. So just for a little bit of texture, here and there, I'm just going to add in a couple of bits of fresh eucalyptus. I have a few different varieties over here. You'll see I have the bigger leaf and kind of the smaller leaf, and it just makes it a little bit more interesting. So that's why I'm saying to you, if you are um, buying shrubs for your own garden, maybe buy eucalyptus as well. And again, depending on the space that you have, they grow very tall, just to warn you. Um, get different varieties. There's a lovely lady in Galway, Yvonne, and she has Mylan's Garden Centre, and she's a fountain of knowledge. And if you ring her up and you tell her that you've been attending or you're doing or watching the Kay's Flower School um, 
classes, she'll know exactly what you want because we send all the students to her and she will post or send out the different shrubs that you want and if you tell her that you're looking for different varieties of eucalyptus or different varieties of pittosporum, she'll send them out to you. So just search up Myland's Garden Centre, Yvonne Myland is her name, I'm on no commission or no discounts, you know that way, I just find that she's brilliant with the students and they're all really happy with the service that they get off her. So there we have little bits of fresh eucalyptus going through it. And now I'm coming around here and I'm just going to add in little bits of the artificial. So there's the artificial and there's the fresh. It's a very slight difference. It's actually very realistic looking, you know that way. So I'm just going to add a few little sprigs of it here and there. And as I said, the idea was just to pick up on the colour of the pumpkin that I sprayed. So that won't fall out. And find it, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to cut it off. Is you know the way normally with fresh leaves, you pull off the leaves at the bottom before you stick it into the floral foam. But obviously with the artificial, it wouldn't pull off. I did go to pull off. So what I'm actually doing here is just getting the scissors and cutting them off. This bigger one is taking a little bit longer. And it's just giving me more of a stem to actually stick into the floral foam so it's less likely to fall out. So we do the same here. Wasn't it great that it happened to me that things went wrong and at least you've seen how to solve that problem. Another way of solving the problem, you can always get a wire and you can wire it and then it'll definitely go into the floral foam. Now this is my lucky box of waxing sticks, okay? So if anybody's ever stuck for waxing sticks, you know that way, comment underneath there and you never know, we could send some out here. So here is our waxing sticks and I'm just going to cut them into a point, you know that way? And I'm cutting them into this kind of like dagger point shape on both ends. So the next time you're in getting your legs waxed, because this is where I get them, ask your beautician for a few waxing sticks. She might give you the whole box of them, but she'll give you a few of them. You're only looking for two. So this will help you secure the lid into your pumpkin. But kebab sticks would do a similar job. But I just find that these are better because the lid can be quite heavy. So you get your lid and you're going to pierce the lollipop stick or your waxing stick. Lollipop sticks will do the same job. And you'll pick them up in a lot of the walk around shops, okay? And then I'm just going to pick an area and then stick this down into it. There we go. Just leave a little bit of space so that there's room for the flowers. So that's what that's looking like so far. So now we're ready for adding in the flowers. But you can see if you wanted, if you were on a budget, if you added an extra bit of foliage in there to cover in a little bit more, it'd be absolutely gorgeous and you wouldn't need to add any flowers. And again, the greenery would last for ages as well. So I'm going to use three Germany. So if you want to write down what I'm using, but if somebody's there and they're saying, well, what could you use instead of the Germany? You could use three large carnations. You could use three open lily heads. You could use three orchid heads. You could use three dahlias, you know what I mean? There's probably lots more sunflowers, you could use three sunflowers. Now gerbers have a hollow stem, so a little tip for you. When you're cutting them, cut them straight across. Where a lot of the other flowers I cut on a slant or cut on an angle, because that way it pierces the floral foam kind of like easier. But you will find with the germany, it's better to cut them straight across, they'll go into the foam that little bit easier for you. Now because I just have three of them, I'm going to divide them up by placing one about there, one about here, and then one about here over the other side. So they may not be perfectly divided up, you know that way, but they're fairly even. So it means no matter what side of the table, you're, if this was a centerpiece, you'll be able to see the Germany heads. The next thing I have then is the baby carnations, and you can bulk it out with the baby carnations. So I'm just gonna take up each stem, we'll push that over there a little bit, and I'm going to cut off a couple of heads. Now cut off the buds as well. Like the amount, there's a magic bin down there by the way, in case you're wondering where that stem went. Um, the amount of people who don't use the buds. Like when you buy the flowers, you're buying the buds as well. And when you're buying them in wholesale, you're also paying for the buds and you're paying VAT on top of the buds, okay? Now a little tip, do you see on carnation stems, there's these nodules as we call them. Try to avoid cutting directly under a nodule because what will happen is the water can't get up the stem. But the main reason is when you're sticking it into floral foam, but even chicken wire, you have this big lump going in first. Where if you cut the nodule off, you know that way, cut on a slant, you can see the way it'll just slide down into it and also the water will go up the stem a lot easier. So, so far I've cut about four stems of baby carnations, but I'm possibly going to go for six. Now, if you're not using the Germany, you can use a lot more. But you can see out of the stem of baby carnations, I'm getting great value. Like I'm getting one, two, three, four. Like four heads. So like they're great value and they're an inexpensive flower. But the main thing is that they last for ages. 
So what I'm now going to do is in between the Germany, sometimes I'm going to go in upwards on the floral foam and other times I'll go down here a little bit lower. And the next time then I may go, I might put another little bit off this one, I'll go upwards and the next time I'll go downwards. And I'm just kind of like mixing the open ones and the tighter ones, you know that way in between. Now I'm leaving little bits of space, okay my bigger one fell out there, I'm leaving a little bit of space in between them because afterwards I want to add in the Veronica and the Hypericum Berry. So again I'll come back around to this section, so I'll add some flowers kind of like upwards into the floral foam and some of the flowers kind of downwards into the floral foam looking up at the lid and I'll mix them around that I have open and big kind of at the top and at the bottom where it's normal or natural for people to automatically pick up all the open heads and the bigger heads, you know that way, or try and mix them, as I said, you had to buy them all anyway, and it is nice when the bigger heads are dead, because they'll die first, obviously, that you have like the buds then to kind of replace it. You'll also notice, like when I'm making arrangements, I don't complete any area, at the, you know what I mean, originally. I kind of like spread it around, so I give kind of like each little section, so say my three sections there, I'm giving each section a couple of flowers just to kind of get them started and see like how many I have left. So we just say each of the sections there has got a few flowers. But yeah, I still have, out of my six stems, I still have lots of heads left over. So now I can go back and give an extra one or two heads into this section and an extra one or two or three heads into this section. And that's the best way to do it, especially when you're trying to divide up your flowers and get better value out of them. Now, I don't know about you, but I remember when my kids were small, my kids are all big now, but I remember when the kids were small, or especially if they had their school friends home, you know that way, and I was making the dinner and I had to divide it between five or six people. And whatever it was I was making, we'd just say spaghetti bolognese. I would put a little bit of spaghetti on the five plates and then I'd have a bit left in the end of the pot and I'd probably give them all a bit extra. And it was the same when I was doing the mince part. I gave them all the scoop of their mincy bolognese and then I'd look in the pan and I still and then say, well, they're all going to get another bit. Where I wouldn't lash it all on and then the poor last child would get nothing to eat. You know that way? And I'm sure you all do exactly the same. Especially anybody that has a gang of kids or a big family. Um, it's obviously, it's a great way of dividing stuff up and I do the same technique with my flowers. So again, I'm just adding in these last couple of baby carnation heads. And I think that, that looks lovely there so far. And again, it's quite inexpensive to make. The next flower that I'm going to add in, I had that left out of six stems, by the way. The next one I'm going to add in is the Hypericum berry. And again, these are beautiful. And some of you may have this growing in your garden. Now, I do find sometimes with the leaf, you know that way, it can be quite heavy. It might hide something. So you can see the way I took off a lot of the leaf. So I'm going to just press that in there and just see our little bits of berry looking out. So take off the leaf that's at the bottom of the stem. And if any of it is driving you mad, you can take some of that off as well. And again, just divide it up, you know what I mean? So I have three sections, so I need to make sure that if I start off by putting maybe two little bits of Hypericum Berry in each of the sections, and if we have any more spaghetti left in the pot, we'll go back and we give them a little bit extra. So you'll all think of that story when you're dividing up your flowers, you know that way, don't lash all the spaghetti on the first place. Again, if anybody's having a problem with something or has any questions, like there's no problem in dropping us an email and I'll try and get back to you. Or again, if you have any questions about training as a florist, because obviously that's what we do here at Case Flower School. We train florists for working in the florist business, in other way, setting up their own business eventually, and um, working as a home-based florist studio, maybe working as a wedding florist or an event decorator. You know, we've classes kind of for all kind of means. So if there's something that interests you, why don't you go to the website, kaysflowerschool.com, and if you click on the professional, just hitting that artificial uh, eucalyptus, if you click on the professional uh, programs, module one, two, three, and four, it'll give you a full breakdown and a full syllabus of what we actually cover. Now, the last thing I'm going to add into this now is a couple of the Veronicas, and again, it's just for a little bit of texture in the arrangement. So again, I'm cutting them quite short, and I'm taking off a lot of the foliage. And here and there, like I just kind of find in this area, I think I'd like one kind of hanging down there a little bit. And maybe in that area, I might like one hanging down as well. But there's no particular pattern and no particular system. And that's what I'm trying to point out to you here. These are kind of like fun arrangements. You will sell them. 
people will absolutely love them. But he also, if you want to give them as a present to somebody, like this would be a very acceptable present. You know that way? You can imagine somebody knocking at your door and giving you one of these. Wouldn't you be absolutely delighted with it? And I know I've demonstrated lots of others and I've used other selection of flowers. This is probably the first one that I put the baby carnations in. But as I said, the baby carnations, they are an absolutely great lasting flower. You know that way? And people always feel that they get good value. As I turned it around, I'm just finding a little cop on spot, as we call it, for sticking in a couple more of the little heads. So I think I have plenty in that. So I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. I hope you picked up a couple of little tips, you know, that way. And again, um, I'd love to see your photographs. So do you know that we have a group on Facebook called Kay's Flurry Fun Group? A lot of people don't know we have that. And it's a fun group for people to post their photographs, whether they're serious photographs, professional photographs, or even fun photographs. You know, that way. It's a great way of posting them up and showing off what you learned. Again, if you do have any questions, you can always email us here at the school, info at caseflareschool.com or again if you want to go to our website if you follow www.caseflareschool.com but also do you know we have a YouTube channel and on our YouTube channel we have lots of free tutorials so listen have a great day everybody and I'll talk to you all very soon bye bye